Hi, welcome back to the shop and welcome to another live stream here at EP3D. Uh, today is an exciting one. We are checking out the Big Tree Tech Pi version 1.2. Um, you've all noticed that I've been doing a lot of clipper videos lately and the folks at Big Tree Tech noticed and they got in contact with me and asked if I would like to uh, review their new Pi that they have. And I said, sure, I'd love to check that out um, for the price. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, I haven't done much printing with it yet. It took me a little while to figure out um, some weird issues with the Wi-Fi, and we'll get into that. But uh, thank you, Big Tree Tech, for sending this my way. Um, this live stream and a review video will be happening. Um, set that there. And this um, uh, first introduction, sorry, <laughs> it's been a crazy manic day. Um, I'm Matthew, your host. In front of me behind you is our producer wife, Emily. Say hello. Hello. I've been upgraded to our producer wife. Uh-huh. Hmm? Okay. The producer wife, our whatever. <laughs> uh, she's going to be relaying your chats, uh, messages my way, and uh, doing all the uh, technical wizardry with the editing and stuff like that. And I'll do the um, nerdy wizardry with the, uh, with the pie here. Um, mm -hmm. What's up? I'm just reading through the, the pre-chat chats. Yeah, I saw there were a few. I answered a couple of them for some folks. Oh. Um, Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh. Well, it says our connection is offline. Uh-oh. Can you all see us? I'm online. Hmm. That's inconvenient. Can you see the stream on your phone? If you can hear us and see us, bear with us for one moment. And we're back. Sorry about that. That was weird. Uh, her, her laptop disconnected from the internet for no odd reason. Everything else stayed connected, but her laptop. So it looked, it looked as if we were offline there for a second. So sorry about that, everyone. Um, hopefully, hopefully you all didn't leave. But um, <laughs> in the meantime, in the Rich, week. happy anniversary. Hope you have a fantastic dinner and that you absolutely spoil her. Oh my goodness, Rich! Happy anniversary. I didn't know it was your anniversary. Get her something nice. She deserves it. Looks like you already answered uh, Baron. Mm-hmm. Jan's with us. Mm -hmm. Hi, hi, Jan. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Jan. Thanks for joining us. It's good to have you all here. Uh, Drew gave a shout out to his EP3D magnetic uh, bed, which he got today in the mail. Thank you, Drew. You are the man and you deserve it. You helped us um, big time. So. None of this, this clipper stuff wouldn't have happened without your help. So you are the man and we appreciate you. We appreciate everyone that comes and watches. You're all great people because uh, it takes, it takes a lot to, to tolerate this stream. I would say, I kid, we have fun here. So um, Ricardo says, hey there, how are you today? What's up, Ricardo? I'm doing great. How are you? It is so good to see you or hear from you. 
I can't see you. If I could see you, that'd be weird. Uh, you just made it weird. <laughs> um. <laughs> no, you made it weird by making it apparent that I made it weird. It looks like everybody could see us. Well, Baron asked if we were still transmitting, so I think we did probably have a blip of weirdness, and then Maybe. Jan said, yes, we can. Um, Michael let us know that we could see them. Hi, Michael. Thanks for joining. What's up, Michael? Um, shout out to Michael um, Castantino, I think is, is how you pronounce Constantino? it. Castantino? Yeah. Constantino, yeah. Constantino. Um, I wanted to say Constantino. <laughs> Uh, shout out to you, Mike. You, uh, you, I'll, and I'll show you guys what he did for the channel. He did a fluid and a mainsail uh, EP3D theme for Clippers, uh, fluid and mainsail. And I'll show you that here in a little bit when we get all this together. It's super nice and super cool. Thank you, Mike. You are the man. Um, and thank you for joining the stream. It's <laughs> awesome to have you. <laughs> Drew says, nope, Matt made it weird. Emily, you were slash are always right. That's the true statement. <laughs> so is, uh, is Robin giving you um, um, your... <laughs> the talking cues. The talking points. Is uh, that what's happening We here? have a celebrity in the chat today. A celebrity. A celebrity. Ed, the old tech guy, is hanging out with us. Says, hey, everybody. It's Ed, the old tech guy. And today I'm here and can see you. Hey, Ed, the old tech guy. Thank you so much for joining the stream. Uh, for those of you who don't know Ed the Old Tech Guy, yes, he is a celebrity. Uh, he does. He has an awesome channel about DIY and uh, tools and stuff like that and tech. Uh, I recommend all of you go check out his channel. Great dude. Great content. He does great live streams, too. Uh, oh, his live streams are just happening places to be. He's they got are. so much energy. It's... It's a good place to be. I don't know if he's always drinking coffee or if he's just lit for what he does, but he's... He's got the energy. He's definitely got all the good energy. I, I, I try to learn from from the uh, the Jedi Master, that is Ed the Old Tech Guy. <laughs> so thank you, Ed, for joining. We'd love to have you here. Um, if you haven't seen, we're talking about a, it's a Raspberry Pi alternative made by a company called Big Tree Tech. Um, the, the Raspberry Pi is out there uh, anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks right now for the Pi 4s. Pi 3s you might be able to get in the 80s, um, but it's such a, crazy market with pies so big tree tech has entered the fray with this and they charge uh, like 35 dollars for it um which is a smoking deal um the hardware on it it's a uh, it's the same hardware essentially as a pi 3 it's an a53 chip clocked at 1.5 gigahertz which is a little faster i think than the pi 3 a gig of ram but there are some things about it that are upgrades from the pi 3 uh you get uh, USB. Actually, I think I have this camera up. Mm, yes. All right. I can't see it. Is it in focus? You're good. Okay. You get USB-C connectivity, which is nice. Headphone port, uh, micro HDMI. Um, there is, you can get a U2 CAN. So basically you can have CAN bus on it with a little adapter. Um, SPI connector for a screen. And the nice thing for power, you could either do USB-C or you could do 12 to 24 volts directly off of your power supply. So if you want to do a standalone install inside your machine, you could jump off the power supply straight to here um, and you don't have to worry about having a separate USB-C power supply um, and wonder if it's gonna be able to supply enough wattage to power this thing. Uh, also four USB 2.0 ports and an ethernet port. So. For 35 bucks, hardware-wise, it's amazing. Um, does it perform? We'll find out. So, yeah, um, the installation process for Clipper is a little bit different, um, very close to the same, but the, the image, you can't use the Raspberry Pi image on it. Big Tree Tech has their own image on there, but they have it on their GitHub, so. Before you go into that, yes. by the way, I still have pre-chat chats and then chat that happened while we were not chatting. Oh, let's go through it then. <laughs> so Kyle says his magnetic bed for the artil artillery hornet is great and he's absolutely loving it. Thank you, so Kyle. So since that's two shout outs for the magnetic bed, do you want to give everybody an update? We had, a, we had an uh oh with the last shipment. Yes. So um, with the last shipment of magnetic beds, a lot of them came a little bit damaged, not 100% to our liking. Um, I picked out all the best ones and, and those were 
good enough to send out. Um, I think there's one of them I sent out at a discount because one side is essentially unusable. Um, the smooth side on some of them had ripples in it that were pretty tall. I measured them with the uh, Where are they? dial indicator. They're stacked up over there in the corner. Um, and the ripples were, uh, is it 0.1 to 0.3-ish millimeters in height? And that's just unusable if you're trying to get a good first layer. She's, she's snagging some out right now. The bigger ones turned out better, but there's some weird funkiness with uh, the surface. I, I doubt we're going to be able to see it on these cameras like this. You got to get the right light. It's hard to see, but it's there. She's, she's going through. But uh, we will be using a different manufacturer. Um, I've already got it kind of figured out with them, and I just have to go through with ordering, you know, getting all the order stuff. And, and specs and stuff finalized so pricing wise will be about the same within a couple of bucks so oh yeah that one's really bad yeah, let me get it. it let me get it on the camera there yeah so side side project here mm. nope can't tell nope oh oh almost almost yeah you can kind of see those ripples down there at the corner closest to us they look like it might be smudges, but they're actually ripples in the actual material. Yeah. So, no bueno. But the, the textured side is still perfectly fine. So I will go through the rest of them and figure out if I want to sell them at a discount. Um, probably will just to recoup my costs because they were not cheap to have made. Um, especially with not, it wasn't a huge production run, so there's a little bit more expense to that. Um, all right. So. Let's see, uh, Michael gave a shout out, or Mike, I think you said. Well, mm -hmm. Michael's his name on here, so gave a shout out back to you, says you the man. <laughs> no. Drew says, so 35 US dollars is a steal of a deal. No yeah. punctuation, so I'm not sure if it's a question mark or an exclamation point. I think 35 would pretty cut it, would cut it, yeah. Um, I, came out, I came up with 27 for the small one, so yeah. Oh, that's right. Drew, were you the one who found, like, raspberry pies at $35 a piece? Somebody did when we were talking about them the other day. Uh, I think somebody had, had found, or Rich had found them at Micro Center That's for right. retail. Yeah, if you could find anything at Micro Center, you're probably going to get it at retail. But good luck, because stock is, is limited. Um, this, um, it's not on Amazon just yet. The um, Essentially, all it is is the Big Tree Tech CB1 on their Pi 4 adapter. So... Um, and you could go that route. They have an adapter that you could stick either a CB1 on or the, the Pi CM4. Um, but if you go with the CB1 and the adapter, it's about 60 bucks. So this is near half the cost. Um, it's all integrated and it's wonderful. Um, and it's the same chip that powers the, the uh, Pad 7. So they're really pushing their CB1 pretty hard. But for good reason, if it's a good quality product, no reason not to, especially for the cost. I mean, if this can be a great replacement for a Pi for, for clipper purposes. I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could run, if you have Home Assistant or something like that, I'm pretty sure you could figure out how to run it on here. It runs the Debian um, Linux-based uh, OS. It's just Big Tree Tech's own little version. Um, but it's all unlocked. There's no, you know, locked directories. You, you have sudo. You have all that kind of stuff. So as far as, like, once you get the OS installed, it's essentially just like a Pi. What? Out again? Mm, there I... we go. Weird. Um, hopefully. We're going to see what happens. In the meantime, we have a little conversation going on. And uh, if it blips out for everybody, we apologize. Hopefully it'll come back. But we have Terry who asked, does the X2 stock screen work with that? Drew responded, letting Terry know that the... It... Stock X2, X2 screen will not work with Clipper and said, once you get Clipper on there, you won't even miss the screen. And Terry responded saying, maybe the stock screen can be swapped out for the BTT if they're the same sizes. And uh, sometimes it's nice to have the screen for example, baby stepping. Uh, yes, you could, I mean, the, the stock screen, yes, will not work, um, but you could get the big TT, the, the big tree tech, 35 SPI, because uh, that works with this one. Um, make an adapter, put it in, you're good to go. 
Um, I'm gonna do that on my Core XY and make it a standalone installation with this. Um, and that's gonna be part of my, my actual review for this, but definitely doable on here. You'll just have to 3D print some sort of an adapter, <clears throat> excuse me. And I don't know if the whole spacing is the same as their Marlin 35 screen, maybe, because I have a mount for that that works on here. It's actually, if you can see on my X1 right there for the Marlin version. So it might be similar in size, but I don't know just yet. Thank you for the heads up, Aaron. Yep. I think we, I think it came back well enough for us that it, this time it didn't lag too bad. That's weird why yours is having trouble. Never had this problem before. Interesting. Somebody said gremlins in the computer. Could be. I think it was you and the little gremlin of ours on my computer messing with things. Right. That's what I'm going to blame. That much stuff connected to the, no, whatever. Um, Michael Constantino says, uh, the stock X2 screen won't work with the most, with most MCUs because of how it's wired. It looks like you had two answers at once. Sorry. There's a few guide out there about how to rewire it, rewire it, rewire, wow, rewire it. But I ended up just using a junk Android tablet and installed clipper screen. Yep. Interesting. Uh, so it's much easier than opening it, but Freaky Dude has a guide on his blog if you're interested in rewiring. Ooh, um, cool. Freaky Dude was, uh, he, he's the one who did the original uh, clipper config for this. That's on the, the GitHub. So, and I, I used his as a starting point and just kind of made it more what I wanted. Because with Clipper, you have all that freedom. So, um, Victor says hi. Hi, Victor. Nice to see you. Glad you're here. And Kyle says, Tuesday Troubles. Tuesday Troubles, yeah. I think what it was is we didn't give our router its daily dose of tacos on Taco Tuesday, and it's mad at us. <laughs> euphemism says, howdy from Ohio. What's up, Euphemism? One of these days, Euphemism, you have to give us the story behind your name there. Yes. Um, and definitely. as long as it's family friendly, because, you know, it could be a euphemism for something. Well, you could just email it to us. Mm, sorry. Yeah. So, um... Let's see here. Okay. Are we, are we all good on chats, honey bunches? Sure. Excellent. I'll bug you again later. All right. Back to the show. Um, so I have my little micro SD card in here. Um, one thing I will note, it does not come with a power supply or micro SD card. It has the unit, a heat sink, a Wi-Fi antenna. There's a jumper for switching between what, what power you want. Um, and then there's a cord for connecting the big tree tech, um, ADXL accelerometer because it uses a SPI for that as well. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just clear this. Um, come on, this thumb drive or this this SD card. Come on, there we go. New volume. Yep, yep, yep. Fat. 32, sure, I don't care. All right, that's done. One thing you can do is you can use the Pi Imager for this, and I'll show you here how, if we're on camera, what camera are we on? Mm, the sorry. wrong, the wrong I got camera. It. I got it. It's okay. I got distracted. <laughs> what are you doing over there? Figuring out the internet? Being distracted. Oh, okay. So you could use the Raspberry Pi Imager. Um, and when you go to flash it, you under choose OS, scroll all the way down and say, use custom. And um, on the GitHub for the Pi, it will kind of get you to, where is it at here? It's the CB1 image. Oh, there's a new version too. Well, I'll get it later. Oh no, that's correct. You download either, there's one uh, with Clipper pre-installed um, it's Clipper and Mainsail, and then there's one that's just kind of minimal. I recommend doing the minimal, so if you want to, if you install Clipper using Kiowa or the Clipper installer and update helper, the directories are a little bit different, and you could run into some issues with not having the correct directories if you use Kiowa. So um, download, I recommend downloading the minimal, um, but you can do the one with Clipper pre-installed. There's nothing wrong with that now, um, and just use it as is. Um, and I already have it downloaded. So I'm going to click on the minimal, open, choose storage, just like normal, and write. 
Yes, I want to continue. And we will let that kind of run. And while that runs, I will connect the power to this thing uh, using a power supply here. Uh, and the 24 volts is there. Yeah, it might be a little out of focus. I want your hands like all up in the way. Well, that's the only way I know how to do it. Is that better? <laughs> it's the angle. That's okay. Now it's out of focus. Well, I have it. I have the focus locked. So here, I'll move, I'll move it over. I didn't grab a USB cord. Of all the things to forget, a USB cord. That's okay. We'll, gra we'll grab one. All right. That is connected. And we are verifying the install. Any more comments? No. Oh, I forgot my coffee over there too. Mm. Mm. Sorry about the music. Our neighbors are noisy. No, that might be the Amazon person with your Father's Day shirt. Oh. No, it's no. our loud neighbors. It's our loud neighbors. I lied. Yeah, the Amazon person typically doesn't. There's one driver who plays music pretty loud, but um, most of them don't. She's spying on the neighbors. That's the FedEx person. Oh, FedEx. Oh, the FedEx person's always loud. Oh. Don't spill. I won't. Coffee. Ah, yummy, yummy, yummy. We're going to not put that next to the power supply. Good idea. <laughs> hey, I think it's done. You can now remove the SD card. Drew I says, don't... I like the higher voltage. Mm-hmm. Uh, Baron says, LOL, overhead mirror like on the cooking shows. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's a good, is that how they do that, a mirror? I didn't even think about that. All right, so once you get that image installed, you open the, the, the boot directory, and there'll be a system.cfg config file. And this is where we enter in some information for us. We are going to... probably want that view on, don't we? All right. Uh, close that. We are going to uh, un uncomment the host name, and you can change it to whatever you want. I'm just going to keep it as BTT. And then for your Wi-Fi, you will put in your Wi-Fi SSID. Oh, Drew wants to know, can you run a camera off the board? I think you can. As well. Can you run it off the board as well? Or just use a USB? At the same time? Mm-hmm. Like, are you talking about a camera to see it in Fluid or Mainsail? Um, all right, Wi-Fi SSID. And I will explain to you the nuance with the password. We just won't show it because I don't want to have to change your Wi-Fi password. I trust you all, but there's a billion people on the internet, <laughs> and, you know. So if you have special characters like dollar sign, anything that's not a letter or a number, you have to precede that character with a backslash. This took me about three weeks to, to figure out. Like I ended up making it work with just a simple password, like a okay, case, and I figured, okay, it's something with special characters. And Big Tree Tech, we went back and forth with this and eventually they got, like their engineers got back with me and said, hey, you need to have a backslash preceding any special characters. So I've asked them if this is something that can be fixed in the future or give specific instructions on because there are n there's nothing in the instructions or in the, the GitHub documentation that says to do that. So I imagine a lot of people will have special characters in their Wi-Fi password. And so one of the complaints that people have had with, with this is that the Wi-Fi not working. And I think this is part of that. So they need to uh, either change it so you don't need the backslash that special characters to just work or have instructions to say what to put. I don't know what, what the reasoning is, if it's something on the back end of the OS or whatever. So you are forewarned. Drew says he wants to know about camera for watching multiple printers. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Uh, and Victor says, how many printers together does it support? I would suspect four since it has four USB ports. And Kyle agrees that the instructions aren't particularly great. Right. So, uh, and so we will put our password in. We want to switch screens so we're not showing everyone our Wi-Fi password here. Uh, I mean, if we had thought. 
thought well enough ahead of time, we probably could have just changed our password to something password so. and then just changed it back later. Uh, I was going to do the guest network, but I didn't have time. So, uh, it's confusing. It is very confusing. Okay. So save that. Uh, so host name. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, we are good. Hmm? Yep, we're good. Well, I don't even think you need to be on the screen right now. Hmm. Take your SD card. And you cannot see that at all. Much better. <laughs> Ugh. They're so small. All right, bam, bam, and power the sucker up. Uh, it is nice to have if you have a micro uh, HDMI cord and a small monitor, hook it up and you can see what it's doing because um, the initial loading process takes about five minutes and then you can see whether or not it did connect to your internet. Actually, I'm gonna pull up my router page right now so I could watch it and see, it, see if it connects. Are we on this? We are not. Okay. Do you want me to be? No. Okay. I mean, you can, but... Let's... Uh, Let's watch you be confused about what our Wi-Fi password is. Right. View list. We're not there yet. <laughs> uh, not yet, Kyle, but I'm pretty sure he would change it to that if he could. <laughs> what? He's guessing our Wi-Fi password. He says EP3D underscore rocks, exclamation that point. be the best password ever. We should just name our Wi-Fi to that. Or we could name it to our stupid neighbors are too loud. So when they see that, when they look at their Wi-Fi. They still wouldn't get the hint? No, they wouldn't get the hint. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Still waiting. Still waiting. I saw it move. What moved? So I want to know, Drew, how's the um, Bamboo Labs treating you? Did you get it yet? Oh, he's got to wait till Father's Day, I think. <gasps> They're making you wait? Oh, come on. This worked yesterday. <laughs> and Drew says this is usually some Star Wars planet. Mm -hmm. I like it. Drew says that his is typically a Star Wars planet. And he says that it's still in the box. <laughs> Uh, Michael says, be right back, hacking into Drew's Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andre's here and says, hey, everyone. What's up, Andre? <laughs> View list, come on. I might have mistyped something. Yeah, it's not showing up. This would happen. So while you're waiting... Mm-hmm. Um, how are we feeling about it so far? So far, it's good. I, I got it running, and I got I actually did a couple of test prints with it. I had it hooked up to the Core XY, um, and it works fine. It's no different than a regular Raspberry Pi. Um, so, yeah, it loads up fluid main cell, whatever, and it works exactly the same. I didn't notice any performance issues. I mean, that was only with one printer, I'll, you know have it. Um, so if you want to use it for multiple printers, I can't say exactly what the performance will be um, for multiple printers, um, but I would compare it to a, a Pi 3 or even the Sonic Pad. The Sonic Pad will run four printers and it's got very similar hardware. So um, the Sonic Pad is no faster. We'll just leave it at that. Steven says, evening everyone from the UK. What's up, Steven? It's good to have you. It must be kind of late in the UK right now. Drew says it connected a lot easier than the Sonic Pad. And Mike Jones made a that's what she said joke. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I think it's connected. Log in as, all right. So we'll, we'll close this. Are we on the screen? Mm -mm. No? Go to the screen. Go to the screen. Don't go to the screen. Okay. 
Drew says, any possible reviews? Any possible upcoming reviews, future reviews for the BTT screens? Uh, when I do the review for this, I will have a big tree text screen to use for it. <laughs> She's over there pulling her hair out. Is it disconnecting again? Uh, it might be back. We're just momentarily blipping away and back again. Weird. All right. Uh, we are on camera three. Okay. So when you feel it, it's got enough time it's loaded up. Host name, whatever you have it. Mine's BTT and it's case sensitive. Oh, come on. It worked a second ago. I had it up. <laughs> what is going on? Drew ruined it for you by saying it connected easier than the Sonic pad. There we go. Well, George says hello from Portugal. I have an X2 from three days ago. Ooh. Updated Marlin 2.1.2 and BTT menu screens. I have a Pi Zero 2W Octoprint working great. Excellent. And love your work. And look forward uh, in future, look for Clipper. Great to have you. Good. Congratulations on your new toy. It's a fun toy to have. Um, welcome. All right. Um, when you're in your, your SSH or PuTTY, log in as B-I-Q-U, password B-I-Q-U. There we are. We are in. So from here, you do exactly how you would a Pi using Kiowa. So we're going to go back to our browser. Clipper installer and update helper. Should have had this up, but I didn't. And we're going to scroll down. Do, do, do. Where are we at? Ah, step one. Right click to copy, right click to paste in the shell and it's going to load up um, all the all the stuff it needs to get the clipper installed. What's so funny, sweetie? Apparently Drew could hear my yawn. Oh. Yeah. Now did yawn hear your yawn? The person whose name is Yawn. Oh. We haven't seen from Yawn in a while. They may have fallen asleep. Maybe they did. Or <laughs> this is a snore fest and they had to leave. Wow. <laughs> Just wow. Yeah, I try. <laughs> this shouldn't take so long. Eh, I don't want his coffee. Whatever. He's ex-military. He drinks his coffee black with nothing in it. It's weird. Well... So if you fill it full of creamer and all sorts of other stuff, you're displacing the coffee. For awesome. Okay. <laughs> Jan says, I'm listening. <laughs> oh, there, there you are. We apologize for the slowness of our internet today, but typically this is a much faster process. It just takes a couple of seconds normally. I don't know what's going on. Um, this is at no fault to the Pi, the big tree tech thing. I think this is our Wi-Fi today. It's just acting funky. This is at fault of the big name Wi-Fi provider we have. So, you know, big name Wi-Fi provider, if you're watching this, uh, we'd like some better internet. Right. How much are we paying for our internet? It's supposed <laughs> to be gigabit, right? Ooh, Kyle says caffeine pills are even faster. Ooh. It's like, um, what were those things? They gave us those one time. In the military. I forget what they were. They're basically caffeine pills. Brutal. Get the jitters. Oh boy, this shouldn't take this long. What's going on? So while Matt's struggling, anybody have any new exciting things coming up in their uh, in their um, crafting? Uh, what do you call that? 3D printing, making. Yeah, and you're making lives. Git is already newest version. All right. Oh, okay. Now you're done. Now it's done. As soon as we start asking questions. I go make conversation and you're like, okay, now I'm done. I'm sorry. We could pause. So I mean, we only have 20 minutes left to no, go here. No, 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 uh, <laughs> Steven says, I've got two X2, one Genius Pro, which will get clipperized. My Solve, 
my Solval. 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 SV06 Plus has been clipperized with Raspberry Pi 4B and Ooh, Big to... Tree Tech T TFT50. I have that over here. Drew, chocolate covered coffee and espresso beans are too good. I eat them like candy. It's dangerous. <laughs> So Ooh, good. Kyle's got a cricket cutter. <gasps> Ooh. I saw somebody, we had a neighborhood yard sale yes this weekend, and I saw somebody was selling one for oh not very much, and I almost thought about it, and then I realized it would just be another one of those toys that sit and don't get used, like some of the yellow ones back there behind Matt. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm, you know what I'm talking about. Whatever. All right. Uh Baron says. Just Mando Master Chef stuff. Oh, there you go. A lot of a lot of people like just doing Mandalorian helmets. This Ooh. was a very popular machine for doing Mandalorian helmets. Well, this and the X1, because they were a bit quicker and more reliable than the um, uh, the Creality. What was that? The CR10 or whatever. Drew says nothing new with 3D printing, but he ordered a new rotary axis for his CNC and it shows up in August. I'm super excited. Ooh, that sounds fun. That's going to be awesome. I'm excited to see. Hopefully axis. you'll send us some pictures of what you create with that. Heck yeah. Uh, Euphemism says, been coding material through McMaster Car. Uh -huh. Going to combine my CNC milling plus love of 3D printing and attempt to make a Voron. Ooh, there you go. Very cool. A Voron would be fun. I was thinking about one of these days to do a Voron, but I have all these grand ideas in my head of my own totally custom designed Core XY machine that's kind of like a Voron, but more mine. Um, maybe one day we'll do that. It'll be like a, a long form channel project. Um, what do y'all think of that? Kyle says he uses that thing so much it's dangerous. And Drew says I can have his wife's with all the dust on it. Which is what I'm worried about, is that we just sit there collecting dust. Though someday, if I can make EP3D shirts, that'd be cool. That would be cool. All right, we are in Kiowa, finally. Um, oh, and Drew wishes that McMaster car was more affordable to ship to Canada. Mm, yeah. One install, one clipper, go. Uh, Python version one. Yep. And we'll just do one instance for now. Blue team go. So the cool thing is that something I've discovered with Clipper is that once you get the Clipper um, firmware flashed onto your printer's main board, you can go from device to device. So I can go from my Pi to my Sonic Pad on all my machines, and I don't have to reflash this machine. It just knows it's there. It sees it, which is super cool. Um, so if you already have done clipper with something and you want to use something new like this or sonic pad or big tree tech pad or whatever you don't have to go through the process of flashing your printer again if you've already done it if you haven't you have to flash what hey uh so baron says what's up baron artillery is supposed to have a core xy at some point in the future they're calling it the artillery spider uh, I think Rich came up with that name. He was won it that. Rich? I think it was Rich that won that contest. I was gonna say somebody that that hangs out with us is. Yeah, one of our viewers won that contest. So um, I've been in contact with Artillery about that. I know a few things about it. Can't spill any beans, sadly. Um, but I can you uh, spill any rice. No. Uh, well, sure. The rice is that I'm gonna get one for review. How about tea? Mmm. Some Earl Grey with some honey and milk. You're so old. I know. You don't get it. It's all good. <laughs> uh, Carry on. Sorry. Whatever. Uh, so as this installs, uh, it takes about, I don't know, five or so minutes to install this if you have quality internet. Okay. Just so in that case. 20 minutes. Drew says T equals muddy water. All them young whippersnappers these days talk about T being like, like, Drama, spill it like, you know, the, the good, the good the goss. New, the new slang calling drama tea. Yeah. Uh, the good gossip. I'm at the Give age. me the gossip. Spill the tea. I'm, I'm officially at the age so where I, I don't so understand old. the young and <laughs> slang. She's a couple years I've newer. I've got like two years before I'm at that age. Yeah, she's she's a couple years newer model than me, so she's she still understands the young slang. Once you hit that, that breaking point, it's over. All right. 
I think that's funny because I imagine some of our viewers here are probably older than you and are probably like, you don't older. even know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> um, we have Michael who says, while that's still loading, curious on Matt's thoughts on the K1 and any problems you may be having. I'm getting one and plan on exploring stock clipper on it. Any big issues slash any thoughts? So the K1 is cool. It, there are parts of it that are definitely very polished and nice, but there are other parts of it that I feel were very rushed. Um, what? Sorry, I had a, I had an epiphany. Epiphany. So, uh, as far as getting stock clipper on the thing, boy, that would be amazing. I don't know how to do that. Um, I did. I saw a video on YouTube on how to kind of hack it and get clipper access, um, so you can get into like fluid and you can get to your <laughs> your printer config and, and your macros and stuff like that. There are things that they have in the config that are different than what stock clipper has. So there's settings in there that if you search for on the clipper documents, the clipper website don't exist. So I believe what Creality has done is they've taken clipper and they've modified it to their own liking to work on this machine, which is, Probably completely unnecessary, one thing, because Clipper has everything you need to make that thing function. Um, you don't need to modify it. I don't know why they did. So, um, I, guess I, I guess we could actually see your face here instead of your computer thinking. Oh, right. Um, so there's that. Now, as far as like, I think a lot of what they've done is they've tried to make it easy for people who have never used a 3d printer or people who just want a simple experience and and that's there it's simple um the there's a um the creality cloud app you could have on your phone um it's it is absolutely riddled with ads it is ad crazy which is super frustrating um i think there is like a pro version that you could pay for i don't know i'm not going to pay for the pro version of creality cloud but um my producer wife took a file sliced it from her phone it has the slicer in the in the app and um she's getting mad at her computer and it works and you can change settings in the slicer from the app and it sends it right to the printer and it prints and it prints pla really good like pla prints are amazing in this thing and fast crazy fast um Creality has been doing a good job at keeping the firmware up to date as far as they've been, they've been pushing updates every, it seems like a few weeks, um, because there's things about it that definitely need flushing out. Um, like the, uh, the logic for the accelerometer and all that kind of stuff. They've, they sent an update what, a couple days ago, a week ago, and it made printing quality even better. So, um, which is awesome. Um, tuning and stuff like that, it's all kind of automatic. You don't have to mess with it, which is great. On the flip side, if somebody that is an enthusiast wants it and they want to be able to change their macros and stuff like that, it's difficult to, unless you hack the machine and you go through and you start messing with the macros. But I would, I would beware not to mess with it too much because of what they have on the back end running, like whatever form of clipper they have running their customization to it, you could break it. Um, now you could obviously reflash it back to, back to stock. That's easy, um, with a USB stick and their, their firmware super simple to do. So uh, I, I hope eventually Creality has some sort of um, like an advanced mode, you know, or something like that that has like an unlocked way of doing it. We'll see. Um, we may be in and out again. Are we? I don't know. It still says we're offline right now. I think it's your laptop because I'm still running. You know what? That's nice for you, isn't it? Try connecting it to the 5 gigahertz. Is that going to cause an issue with all this, though? It shouldn't. I mean, you disconnected from the internet earlier and it didn't cause any issues. Mm, it did, though. Oh. Hang on, let me see. Is it still showing on your phone? Oh, you know what? It's showing that, that guest Wi-Fi that you said you no longer had. It's still showing it. And I'm wondering if that's part of it. It shouldn't be up. Because I know I lost 2.4 and now we just have that guest Wi-Fi. Why is it still there? I took it off. Interesting. Okay. Weird. Anyway. Um, Connect to the 5 gigahertz. We're going to be right back after these messages. You don't have to switch, do you?
If you can hear us. If you can hear and us. And we're still here. <laughs> give us a thumbs up or something because we are having some serious technical difficulties. We're very sorry, everyone. This is not normal. Uh, let's see. Camera two. Okay. I'm going to read chats here because I don't have anything up here. Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> You're going to like this joke here. Yeah. Well, okay. So first of all, hopefully you all can still hear us. A euphemism says I'd absolutely love to see a custom ethereal core XY printer. That would be fun. I want to do it. And I sent you some thoughts about that. That got my my brain wheels grinding. Are you sending me brain waves? Yeah. Don't Are try you getting them. Well, if you're trying on 2.4 gigahertz, clearly I'm not. <laughs> clearly it's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what's causing the internet to go out. My my brain waves are interfering. Maybe because you know I'm actually using my brain, and that's causing Maybe. the problem. I wonder if we're like maxing out the total number of clients allowed to be connected to the thing. No, it should be able to have like fifty, right? Anyway, whatever. Um, so there was conversation with between Drew and Euphemism about um, uh, that one place. Where did it go? Like MasterCard mm -hmm. and Euphemism says, I wasn't aware of the increased shipping to Canada. I'm too spoiled because I get work discounts. Any Canadian equivalent company that you know of? And Drew responds, not really or not that I found. I can't get it. I can get it though, but the exchange kills me. Yeah. And you're going to love this one. You ready for it? Sure. I literally did a face palm. Baron says, because they capital C-A-N. Oh, goodness. Because <laughs> they... <laughs> wow. Canadian dollar can, huh? Yeah, huh? that is awful, Baron. That's so I you. Love I love it. That's so you. Oh, I'm actually jealous that I didn't come with that. <laughs> uh, Drew's, Drew's just giving you general trouble, okay. of course. Um, you, cool and hip, what happened here? Do we go through some sort of wormhole? Uh, let's see. Baron said at 547 his time, we were still streaming. So that was a few minutes ago. So that's good. Okay, we're still going then. Uh, Mike says, yeah, that's fair. Hate that Creality pretty much steals Clipper and rebrands, but look like looks like there's at least hacky ways around it. More worried about Creality's quality control. Yeah. Um, boy, this really went off the rails. And Drew says, uh, he's agreeing with Mike and says, I was debating on a K1 or a P1P. Went with the P1P due to Creality, quote unquote, rebranding. And, and I think right now the P1P is a better choice. Um, Software-wise, um, hardware the K one's pretty good. Um, the K one's going to be a really great intro person one. I think I would really enjoy using the K one. Yeah. But all of you with all of your three D printer techie knowledge, your own special weird language you've got going on and everything, it, it can be frustrating. <laughs> yeah. So. Right. Um, well, back to here. We've got Clipper installed. Hopefully, I can show you. We got we got seven minutes here. Unless you want to go pick up the human child, but oh, you have your thing. You never mind. Okay, so uh, get Moonraker in. Uh, yeah, install Moonraker. I just said to. So for anybody that's new to this process, has never seen how Clipper is installed. Um, this. Um, I wouldn't even call it a program. What do they call this in Linux? Um, there's a word for it. I don't know. Basically a program. And it, it gets all the stuff it needs to from, from GitHub. All the stuff's on GitHub. Um, and so you could update it from here and all that kind of stuff. And it makes the whole install process way easier. Because um, it's all it's done in order. It tells you what to do. It's pretty simple. Um, and it's quick. So, and from after I got the image installed on the um, SD card and changed the Wi-Fi settings, from then on, it's exactly how you would do on a normal Raspberry Pi. So, slight bit different, but honestly, it's if, if you're going this route anyway, it's no harder than you would expect it to be. And it's totally worth it from what I've seen so far. Uh, I haven't done an in-depth, like, long-term use case on it. But so far, it's been great, the little bit of testing that I've done. So um, soon I will start that video 
I got to finish this review video I'm working on with something else. And then the, um, the Sonic Pad video I got to get done before I get to this. So a lot of work, a lot of work to do still, but I'll get there. Loading, loading, loading. Mm -hmm. Almost done. I'm hoping to Whoa. Date. Huh? Okay. Oh, uh, we're back? A whole bunch of chat just like, woo. Oh, boy. All of a sudden. Well, that's good. Uh, Michael says, yeah, me too, but ended with up with the K1 because even though it's essentially stolen and rebranded, it's the capability to upgrade parts, modify Clipper after exploiting, etc. Yeah. Uh, Baron says, please keep us informed about the bamboo once you use it to Drew. Mm. Well, I want to get one. One of these days, maybe. Right. So cool. I'd want to get the X1C, though, just because. A euphemism let us know we were back up and running, but my cool. chat was being really weird. Uh, Michael says, I want to tinker, but not like overload i didn't feel like i could do much with the p1p just much more of a premium product with bamboo which is great but still want to be able to fill a little bit mm -hmm. um, one thing that with the k1 it does run can bus um, so they have their own can bus controller and all that stuff built in it's all proprietary there's nothing off the shelf as far as the electronics go um, so even their fans are kind of weird <laughs> so it's warning <laughs> nothing says you couldn't get i mean obviously if, if you know what you're doing you can get off the shelf hardware and convert it you know get a different main board and all that kind of stuff and convert it to stock clipper that would be i mean that'd be a heck of a thing to do but doable um Let's see. baron says uh dad joke for the win and off the rails just the way i like it yeah including Kermit the Frog excited gif. That's all it says. It doesn't oh. actually show the gif, sadly. Yeah, I know the gif. All right, Moonraker installed. We are going to do main sail on this. Uh, Redline wants to know... Not E3. Oh, uh, Kiowa is working on it? Question yes. mark? Yes, Kiowa works on it. And that is that was the big thing for me, is if Kiowa didn't work, it's not worth it. So, um, because Kiowa is very quickly become like the standard for clipper install and updating um, it seems like everyone is going that route uh, for good reason because it, it's dead simple it works it's one-stop shop for your whole clipper install so um one thing that that i really really appreciate from big tree tech is that they understand the concept of open source they know clipper is open source so they keep it that way. They don't have any special nonsense going on in the background that locks you out of certain things. It is once you get Clipper installed, it is vanilla, stock Clipper, no thrills, no fills. It's what you get, right? Um, the only the only slight difference between this and a Pi is that you have to use their CB1 image. So uh, you're not going to get your regular Pi OS. So if you wanted to get a screen and run the little Pi OS. Um, interface i couldn't make that work there may be a way to do it i don't know um but they're not marketing this thing to be oh a couple more minutes they're not marketing this thing to be um a pi replacement for like typical pi things it's really marketed toward people wanting to stick it in their 3d printer and it's perfect for that so what what did i say nothing oh whatever <laughs> Yes, download the macros. I switched off of that because we are, we're pretty much there. Are we done? We're done. We're done with time? We're done. I'm sorry, everyone. If we didn't have all these technical difficulties, we could have gotten there. But you know what? We'll continue next week. I must say that the universe is saying that this should not happen. Last week we had this planned and our internet completely went out. Oh my goodness, man. And today our internet is in and out. Right. What is up with that? So, no idea. Well, ah, let's see if I can get mainsail up right now. Okay. Real quick. Uh, HTTP colon uh, BTT oh, dot local. 
and it might need to be restarted. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Bam. We're in. Uh, and I will very quickly show you. Drew says, thanks for another video and a chance to chat. Always a blast. We love having you around, Drew. It's too much fun to pick on Matt with you guys. Right. Baron says, thanks. Enjoyed it. Wow. Upload files. Let's see. That's the... And that's four o'clock. That's four o'clock. All right. Well, we got to end it here. Sorry. We will continue this next week and finish this off and do a test print. Um, thank you for everyone for being patient and hanging out with us today. Um, thank you, Big Tree Tech, for sending this thing over. New live stream next week to finish this off, plus review video coming. Um, for all of you who want to get this, I have links to it in the video description, plus the GitHub pages for it. Um, also links to my website, uh, the Facebook, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. Also, if you fancy buying me a coffee, I'm on Ko-Fi, link in the video description. Um, thanks again, everyone, for watching. Sorry to cut this short. We got to go. Um, happy 3D printing, and we'll see you in the next one.